Hi everyone, if you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Riley. Welcome to my garden. Welcome to week seven of the 2023 garden. This week is going to be a garden tour. I got nearly everything planted out today. It's been a long day, a lot of hard work. I had to build garden beds, I had to fill garden beds, I installed trellises, I mulched garden beds. I'll show you the patio bed first, what we have growing here, then we'll go out into the main garden and I'll show you what I have growing in one, two, three, four, five of my six beds. One bed I do not have planted out yet and we'll talk about that when we get out there and why I haven't planted it out. But before I get started, I do have some of these chili peppers that I need to go ahead and harvest now. These were just seeds that were given to us and we eat quite a bit of spicy food so these really are great dried and used in various recipes and this plant has been very prolific. I do still need to take this mulch out. I need to feed this. I may actually repot it and put some new potting soil in there. We'll see. That's a job probably for tomorrow. I've got a few more on here I'm going to cut off. And first harvest of this pepper plant this year. That's great. Let me show you what I have growing in these beds. This bed I have three San Marzano 2 tomato plants from Johnny's Seeds of Maine. They're in the back. They're about 12 inches apart. We're going to be pruning those to a single stem and I'm going to be growing those up this trellis. In front of those I have some African marigolds and one basil plant growing with them. And then in the very front of that bed, I don't have anything growing yet. I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to be putting there. The bed beside it, we have four cucumber plants. We have some African marigold and some French marigold. And in front of those, that is buckwheat. And I have never grown that before. It's supposed to get to about six inches tall and start flowering. I'm hoping it wasn't a mistake to put those in front of the marigolds rather than the marigolds being in front. But those marigolds get pretty, pretty big too. Um, beside those two, those four cucumber plants, we've got two more tomato plants. And these are big beef tomato plants also from Johnny's Seeds and I'm going to be growing those the same way up one main stem or possibly two and growing them and, and strapping them to that trellis using some garden velcro. We've got some more African marigolds and another basil plant growing in front of that and some more buckwheat growing in front of that. Now these beds I still have to mulch over. Well, that's part of another video I'm doing so I'll be doing that tomorrow. Now, in this patio bed, we've got another big beef tomato plant that has to go in. Uh, that has to be transplanted. I have not done that yet. That's also part of another video, so I'll be doing that tomorrow. We have four sugar cube cantaloupe plants growing beside that tomato plant. And these sugar cube cantaloupes are about the size of a golf ball and I've never grown them, but I'm really excited to grow them. One of the ideas from the seller was to cut them in half, scoop out the seeds, and then put a scoop of vanilla ice cream in the middle of that and eat that with the cantaloupe. I thought that was a great idea. We have more, more marigolds there, both African and French marigolds, and more buckwheat in front. And here in this bed, we have regular San Marzano. Now this is an heirloom, as is the San Marzano 2 that was in the other bed that I showed you. I have a African marigold and another basil plant growing there with the buckwheat in front. We'll be putting more of the French marigold in this bed, and that's going to be going in front of that tomato plant and in front of those three cucumber plants behind that buckwheat that you see. And the French marigold, I find, is much more fragrant than the African marigold. And I want that for, uh, to deter pests and to bring in 
some beneficial insects and pollinators into the garden. Why don't we head out into the main garden and we'll show you what we have growing out there. In this bed today, I installed the soaker hose, I put on the mulch, we got the zucchini planted, there's four zucchini plants in here, there's two dunja, which is a, a green zucchini plant, and there's two yellow fins, which is a yellow zucchini plant. I also have some French marigolds growing in here. They're eventually going to get shaded out and I'll just let them die and, and incorporate into the bed. These also help to prevent uh, root knot nematode and I had a problem with root knot nematodes in one of my beds last year. Actually two but in one more than the other one and that bed is the one I'm going to leave fallow I think this year. These hopefully are going to do great. These are some of my favorite things to grow and in back of these going to grow up this trellis I have some vortex beans that I'm going to be growing up that trellis and we'll see I can see some of them coming up I just put them in I had about eight seeds left in a package and I thought why the heck not and I just planted them back there that's why I haven't put mulch on the back I'm going to bring you in close and show you this bed here but in this bed this bed is uh, the one I built today I filled it today I mixed up a batch of my raised bed mix I put it in this bed, filled it up, I planted out peppers, I planted out sugar baby watermelons, which are also small melons that grow to the size of a, a softball or a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna be growing up this trellis and I've got another idea for these that I'll show you. But let me bring you in close and I'll show you exactly what I did with this bed. So you can see here I have two bell pepper plants that I transplanted in and I have three of these sugar baby watermelon plants. Today also what I had to do was I had to rebuild my inlet for my soaker hose that brings water into this bed. I had to cut that out when I took the old bed out so I had to get the PVC glue out and some PVC out and install all of that uh, which didn't take all that long but it was still you know, it was pretty hot out here and it was still a job I had to do, but it's done now. Beds are all on automated watering using the Beehive water timer, uh, which makes my life a lot easier. Let me show you what I'm planning to do and how I'm going to plan to grow these watermelon. So I have three of these melons growing here, and they're going to be growing up this trellis, but they're going to outgrow this trellis without a doubt. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run one two by four from that raised bed up there all the way to here, mount that in. I'll do another one about two feet out. I'll put the same trellis material on it and then I'm going to let these melons grow up and then arch over these two beds or these three beds. I think it's going to work really well. We'll see how these watermelon do before I do that, but that will not be too hard of a job. It's just two two by fours and some trellis netting won't take me very long at all to to build that I think it's gonna work really well this is the bed I think I'm going to leave fallow this year I don't think I'm going to do anything with it in this bed we have three butternut squash I have two regular cantaloupes our cantaloupe plants growing back here, they're called diplomats, and I want to train those to grow up this trellis. I was going to do another, another bed of acorn squash, but I'm just a little concerned about that bed and the root knot nematode I had in it. I think I need to solarize that bed. I did solarize this bed, and then when I filled it, I put in a lot of crab meal. Uh, crab meal attracts beneficial nematodes that eat the root, top, new, root knot nematodes. Uh, but the root knot nematodes last year, they just, they stunted all of the growth from everything that was living in this bed, growing in this bed. This year, uh, the, these seem to be doing okay. So hopefully we've got that licked. If they all of a sudden become stunted, 
I, I know what the problem is. I was very careful to sterilize my tools after I was working in this bed so I didn't spread this to other beds. Let's hope, let's hope we solved it. One other thing I did last week, and I forgot to tell you about it, was I made compost tea, aerated compost tea for the first time. And there is a lot of different information and contradictory information about compost tea out there. I, I found what I believe to be a really, really good resource and I followed those instructions. And compost tea, it gives, uh, it's not about feeding the plants. Compost tea adds beneficial microbes, uh, beneficial bacteria, beneficial fungi to your soil so your soil can more easily feed your plants. I am really, really excited to see the impact of this on the beds this year. So I'll be feeding them once a week, maybe once every two weeks with this compost tea. Compost tea. And once I learn a little bit more about it, I'll be doing a video of that. And we can have a look at how well it performs. And this is another brand new bed. Same jobs today with installing the lines and installing the soaker hose and putting the mulch on. I planted two bell pepper plants, orange bell pepper plants in here, and I have three more of these watermelons, sugar baby watermelons growing in back. And the idea for this is the exact same as the other bed to build the upper structure, the upper trellis, let those plants grow up and trellis out over these, this whole area, I think is gonna work well. And these got planted out about a week and a half ago. And this is also zucchini, so they're a little bit further along. I was a little worried about root knot nematode in this bed because when I planted these out, they really didn't take off like I expected. And then after I fed them that compost tea, almost overnight, they, they really started to grow well. So I don't know if there's a correlation there or not, but we're gonna keep using it this year and we're gonna see how well it, or how it impacts the garden. So we've got more of the Dunja zucchini growing here, more of the yellow fin zucchini growing here. And I have French marigold in this bed as well, also for the same reason, to deter the root knot nematodes. And eventually that will just die and be incorporated into my, into my garden bed. The last job I did today was I straightened out the arbor, but you can see the jasmine is really starting to look beautiful on this arbor. This left side is finally starting to fill in where we had to cut it out and replant it in there about a year ago. It's starting to fill in after this season. This should be perfectly balanced again. I have some bird nests in here. I have some pigeons that every year Put a nest here and raise a little baby bird in there. I, I don't mind at all. I think it's great. That's the garden tour for week seven in Riley's garden. Thank you for watching.